Hey everyone, welcome to Reviving the Local Spirit, where we inspire revival in the land, stewardship of government, and inform citizens to action. I'm your host, Elizabeth Oaks Roach. I am based out of East Texas. And right now, I want to talk to you about a topic I'm hearing a lot of buzz on. Um, Maybe you're hearing it too. It's about sexually explicit books in public school libraries, trannies reading to kids at library story hour, or maybe cartoon porn and books marketed to preteens or teenagers. And maybe you think, is that an issue here in Texas? Isn't that something that's in the cities or the left coast? That's not really a thing where I live. Well, you might be surprised. Today, I will be talking with Kristen Bentley, and Kristen is also in East Texas, and she is the state Republican executive committee woman for Senate District 1. District 1 is in the area of Tyler. Kristen has her master's of science in special education, and she works as a special education advocate. She also used to work as a public school teacher. So with that background, she's especially equipped to safeguard children from inappropriate content and works to preserve the innocence of their education. She currently serves as chair of the subcommittee for the Republican Party of Texas Legislature or Legislative Priority, Stop Sexualizing Texas Kids. And today I got, or I'll talk with her about those efforts and how she became involved in the passage of HB 900. HB 900 is a bill here that passed last year in the legislature. It puts into law standards for school libraries. So standards to keep sexually explicit content out of schools is part of the bill. But also vendors will have to adhere to a rating system. And those with a sexually explicit rating system can be removed from the library. Listen as Kristen tells her story, how she got involved with the passage of the bill and what efforts she's leading now. And you'll also learn how you can find out if inappropriate material is in your child's school library. I think you'll be fascinated by this story and especially the spiritual implications of sexualizing children too early. Welcome. So I just want to thank you for, for joining me. And, um, I, you know, I, I wondered if you could just give a little context to the listener. Um, you know, I know that right now you are working with, um, this or your Senate district one SREC committee woman, and that is in Republican leadership. Um, is that kind of, uh, where you got started with this um, HB 900, or was it before then? Well, I started working on the issue of the filthy books that we were finding in our schools before I became the SREC committee woman here in Senate District 1. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and that just started um, about, what well, was about three years ago last fall when we started to f- discover this problem very publicly about, you know, inappropriate materials being in our schools, very pornographic and explicit content. And so I, I audited the school library where my oldest son was attending school in Tyler and Mm -hmm. found, uh, oh gosh, I mean, hundreds of, of some of the worst books that we find in Texas schools. And so that's what really introduced me to the, to the, uh, problem and I got connected with a lot of other people who had been working on this issue a lot longer than I have and um, and then that led to the uh, serving on the subcommittee for the legislative priority stop sexualizing Texas kids and chairing that committee and then the work that that um, that or some of the solutions that we identified we were able to put into bills including HB 900 in the in the 88th legislative session which was last the last session yes so that was in the last session um that we just ended about a year ago Mm -hmm. and uh and so we have our 89th legislative session coming up in january 2025 
and we just uh, had our convention, our state convention, yeah. and for the Republican Party of Texas and our delegates chose the legislative priority stop sexualizing Texas kids again. Great. And, um, yes, so we'll continue that work into the 89th legislative session. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, so that was kind of how you, you had just heard rumblings about it. Cause I know you said, just remind me, um, that you used to be a teacher, um, at that time when you heard about this topic, this was, um, like, you, were you not a teacher at that time or, or this just, you just heard rumblings about this. Yeah. Is that kind of how you got started in it? Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, I am a special education advocate and I've been doing that for eight years now. I was a teacher, a special education teacher. Um, and when I had my youngest son, I went into, um, advocacy work so I could have a little more control over my schedule. So, sure. yeah. And what happened in, um, I guess it was 2021, in the fall of 2021, Matt Krause, who was a state representative at the time, came out with a list of books that were possibly unsuitable for schools. And these books included books that related to critical race theory um, mm -hmm. and then all of these sexually explicit materials. And at that same time, too, we saw uh, moms from Keller ISD exposed that they had the book Gender Queer, which is cartoon porn uh, or contains mm -hmm. cartoon porn in it in their mm -hmm. school there. And, um, and then just nationally, this was getting a lot of attention. So I was working um, already in the 87th legislature. We had just finished the 87th session and had been working on issues related to pediatric gender modification. And so my um, friend, Jill Glover, who was a a uh, former SREC member who championed issues related to protecting kids. Um, unfortunately, she passed away this, this year. Okay. Um, but she championed these issues and she led legislative priorities, but she's the one who called me and asked me if I could audit my son's school. And, you know, I'd heard the rumblings, as you say, of, um, yeah. of this issue. And I think it was kind of one of those silver linings of COVID. A lot of parents were really getting involved in seeing what was going on in their kids' schools. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And kind so of woke she, everybody up. It did. And so yeah. she you know, she's the one who called me and um, asked me to look into it. And I was not a teacher just at that time, you know, an, an activist and a mother and um, involved in policy already. But um, I just thought, um, I'll never forget because I was on the way to Arkansas to go on a trip with my husband. And, and yeah. I got off the phone with her and said to my husband, I'm not, you know, I'll do it, but I'm not going to find any of these books in my son's school. We live in the most Christian conservative part of the state. There's just no way. And yeah. so but when I got back, I was absolutely shocked, shocked at what I found and, and really angry about it. Um, yeah. But I do. I do remember to your point about being a teacher, I remember um, I was so angry and it's like, but I, I called, I, I remember calling my mom and, and talking to her about it and saying, I don't know how as a former teacher, I didn't know that this was going on. Um, I just, you know, it kind of gave me, um, I think, understanding to maybe give some grace to some of the uh, school districts, the administration, and and some of the teachers and librarians who just had no idea, even though I think there there's responsibility there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was just, I think it was under our noses for, for quite a while, and it just sort of yeah. snuck in. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, I, and I think this is probably um, handy for you being a teacher, but like for me, I wouldn't even know where to go, like even to look for that in the school or in the school library. How did you know? Um, like, do you just go into the, the library database and put in keywords? Mm. Um, and then you get a list of authors that come up. I mean, how, how did you know how to identify those books? Well, it's, you know, it's, it is amazing. Three years ago, we really didn't have very many lists to go uh, based on 
Um, we, I did a lot of keyword searches when yeah. I was looking at the books um, originally uh, and auditing in Tyler ISD. And it's like one thing would lead to another. And I was just such a dog on a bone. I think at that time yeah. where, um, because I would do a lot of cross-referencing and look at, um, look at Amazon reviews and I would get books, digital wow. copies of them on my Kindle and do keyword searches. But since then, I mean, we, a lot has happened in the last three years and we've got, and right at that same time too, there, I mean, there was a lot going on on this issue at that same time. So there were, um, there were resources being developed. Booklooks.org is a great resource for book reports, okay. uh, ratedbooks.com, mm -hmm. ratedbooks.com. That's another one. Uh, Texans Wake Up, that's Jamie Haynes' website or organization she started to, um, make book reports and um, share book reports. And so, you know, in the beginning, we didn't have a lot of lists. We have a, quite a few lists now. Um, yeah. And I have a list that I put on that I've vetted um, where in one way or another, they could meet the standard of removal uh, based on educational unsuitability, pervasive, being pervasively vulgar or sexually explicit. And that's on protectchildhood.org yeah. and every single one of the books on that list has a book report to go with it that you can share with your school board or superintendent so but yeah but in the beginning we didn't have we did a lot of cross-referencing and creating book reports and we're still doing that too I just want to say uh, the problem with lists is that we're always mm -hmm. adding to them always adding to them yeah yeah for sure I can, you know, as you're talking, I can see how God has equipped you, like your experience from before as a teacher, a special ed teacher, mm -hmm. um, has really helped, um, or, or was it special ed advo advocate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how that has equipped you, um, to do this work and to know the systems, mm -hmm. you know, the ins and outs, um, which kind I love, of I love that. Yeah. I just have to say, I love that. I think God equips that when God calls us to something, he equips us, you know, and, and oh, yeah. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Our backgrounds always help. It's like one thing builds on another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, that, that kind of leads me um, to when, when I first heard you talk, um, I was at a grassroots America, we, the people mm -hmm. meeting. And that's where you introduced um, Pastor Brandon Burden. But before that, you were talking about um, this, you know, when we're in a war, we're in a war for the Lord, and that war is fun. And, you know, I was just fascinated by that story. I know that this is um, probably a battle you didn't know that you were going to go up against. Um, but I wondered if you could just share that story, because I think the listeners would really be fascinated uh, by it. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last legislative session, um, we, you know, with, with the legislative priority that we had and, um, the work we were doing, the, the biggest battle was for HB 900. And that was to pass legislation that would protect children from the, you know, the, just the sexually explicit filth in their school libraries. And so, um, and, what and and there were a lot of bills, by the way, that were filed for that. It's just an HB 900 was endorsed by our subcommittee and and got off to a great start. And so we were driving that legislation, um, and it was a real fight in mm -hmm. the end. And so um, and I talk about it um as I mean a huge battle, and and I tell people that war is fun, mm -hmm. and so when we go to war. Uh, in this way and go to war in a legislative battle, yeah. it is fun. And, and I think it's important to have a certain attitude where you enjoy the battle yes. or you have to enjoy the battle in order to be able to do this work. Otherwise, I think you get defeated um, pretty easily. And so Brandon Burden, um, for those who don't know, um, mm -hmm. he has an organization or a PAC, North um, 
oh gosh, it's uh, North Texas Conservatives. And so, but he's a pastor up in uh, North Texas in Frisco. Mm -hmm. And he just wrote a book, um, but he did all, he sent buses, his pack sent buses every, I think it was every Tuesday or maybe yeah. not every Tuesday, but they, they had a, yeah. they had a ton of buses going down um to the Capitol and and so one of the things that Brandon and I collaborated on was a day of action and prayer for stop sexualizing Texas kids and he and I share so many different just there were some pretty amazing things that happened through prayer at yes. the Capitol and we have testimony in that that's just um, profound. And he documents that in his book. And so when I was at Grassroots America, We the People and introduced him, mm -hmm. um, it was such an honor to be able to do that and just, um, and, and speak, I, I guess, into that experience and that shared experience that we had going to battle. And, yes. and the thing, yeah. And one of the things that people People who know me, people who hear me, um, when I speak at grassroots, they've heard me say over and over again, war is fun. And, mm -hmm. and so I think it's the first time for those who, who have heard me say that before, really be able to understand the context of that because, because you know, what I was able to explain is that we're not at war with flesh and blood, right. but we're at war with principalities and evil and dark forces. And it's mm -hmm. a spiritual battle that we're, mm -hmm. that we're in. And when we go to war and go to battle for the Lord, he mm -hmm. equips us, he gives us everything we need. And, and it is fun, fun, mm -hmm. fun to go to battle for the Lord. So. Yes. I completely um, agree and I can relate to that. Um, up until a couple of years ago, I worked um, in an administration for a local city and um, or not not local here, but uh, in Washington state. And, um, you know, I was in a liberal town and it was very much I didn't know what I was up against. I didn't know that um, I had been equipped for it. And so I had to, um, you know, put on the armor every day and then, uh, you know, pray in the spirit and, and also ask for other people to intercede for me. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that I saw, I saw all kinds of prayer answered. Um, I saw um, demonic activity that things that I thought I wouldn't, I had no idea that even existed. Um, really strange things in government. Um, there's a lot of uh, demonic activity. And it makes sense because in government, it always, it's like the first place that it's going to affect the society is, is, is this top down. Um, and that's not really how it was supposed to be. You know, our founding fathers knew that it was supposed to be, um, from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, uh, restore that. Um, we have to get the word out that people are supposed to govern you know, the government is just there for protection of our rights, um, but it's up to us to govern. And so, um, yeah, I, I totally, totally relate to what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and I, and I would ag agree. I mean, I think um, you, we do see a lot, we see a lot of, we just see a lot of demonic forces, I think, mm -hmm. um, more than ever, I think a lot of people are waking up to it and seeing it. There's yeah. a lot of inversion. Um, this whole issue around pediatric gender modification and yeah. the assault on our children, um, the sexualization of our children, it is so satanic. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, and so, you know, and, and it is our, it's our job as parents and as grandparents and grown-ups, even if you don't mm -hmm. have children, to stand between the enemy, Satan, yes. and our yeah. children. And um, and so, you know, I, I do hope that we see, and I think we will see even more people activated this next session to go down mm -hmm. to the Capitol. And we will be doing 
Every, we'll be doing um duplicating what we did last time. Yeah. But I think exponentially. And one of the things that I didn't really realize until maybe later in the session toward the very end is the kind of, we were doing a lot of declaring when we were down there. Yes. Um, and, and that's, you know, and that is so effective. And yes. so we're, yeah. we're, yeah. Yeah. It's really great. It's, it, and that is, I feel like that is so key to declare the word of the Lord, because the word says that the angels, they hearken to the word. So they can't help, but obey the word. So they have to go and be active on our behalf. So it's like heaven is cheering us on when we declare the word of the Lord. And, um, you know, so many people, um, they're not aware of this, that we have authority to, to speak the word of God and, um, and it shifts the atmosphere and the demons are bound by that. Yeah. So it, it, it makes it getting, mm -hmm. <laughs> getting the chills all the way to my cheek. Yeah. 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 I think one of the things that, um, that we have, we have just amazing believers on our, on our subcommittee too. And so, mm -hmm. um, and I, one of the things that I think is really neat about HB 900 is that there is a lot of testimony through it, whether it's my testimony, Brandon's testimony, some of the others on the subcommittee, mm -hmm. um, because we saw the Lord working through, through it. And and then there's been a lot of um, challenges with the bill since then, because HB 900 is going through the courts right now. And mm -hmm. as, the, as it goes through the lower courts, there's an injunction on the, the enforcement at, uh, mechanism in the bill, which was, mm -hmm. you know, where vendors were required to label essentially are rate books that are sexually explicit and then issue a recall of any books that they sold previously to Texas schools that are sexually explicit. And so there's, I won't go into all the details on, on the lawsuit, um, yeah. but in January is when the Fifth Circuit, a three judge panel, uh, two out of the three blocked the the enforcement mechanism and it was very devastating news for so many of us who worked so hard on the bill but what i realized almost immediately and i believe you know the lord was speaking or the holy spirit is really you know just um cuz i got the message very quickly yeah. that that what it was revealing was the bigger problem in Texas education, which is enforcement, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of education code. Uh, we have, I believe on Amazon, you can buy the, all of, you know, Texas education law, and it's over 700 pages, and mm -hmm. most of it is not enforced. Yeah. And so, and so we, um, so HB 900 is revealing a bigger problem with enforcement in mm -hmm. Texas public schools. And through that, we're going to be able to fix, we're going to be able to fix some things that have needed to be fixed for a very long time. And yeah. so I just love that, that God is continuing to work through, through, mm -hmm. the, through, the, through this bill. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you about the outcome of the passage, um, mm -hmm. but it sounds like, you know, it's being litigated and that makes sense. This stuff is always fought really hard, um, especially something like this, because if you think about it, it's logical conclusion, you know, people might ask, well, what's the big deal? You know, they can look at whatever on their phones. Um, but the big deal is when it comes from a school, it kind of sends this message to kids that, you know, it's okay, or it's not that bad. And I see it as its logical conclusion is that children who are sexualized early, um, later on become sexually dysfunctional, or they may even lead into the transgender thing. And then, you know, you've got kids who are castrated or um, chemically castrated later on. 
and then they can't have children. And so you can see it's like this demonic agenda of um, depopulation, really. I mean, when people are sexually dysfunctional or they can't have children at all, at all uh, you can't reproduce. That's and, right. and that's, you know, what Satan's thing is, you know, to steal, kill and destroy. Um, so you can see that. And, and that's why it's, it's such a battle. Um, yeah. and, and so I wonder, um, if this is just like HB 900 was really like a, a, a wake up call to everybody. It's like the start, you know, your, yours was, was to get it started. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think um, one of the things that HB 900 did that was really important is it created the first ever mandated collection and development standards for school mm -hmm. libraries. Mm -hmm. And so school libraries and libraries have libraries, including school libraries, have always been looked at as places of independent inquiry. And mm -hmm. so school libraries have not had strict standards in any state that I know of, that I'm aware of. And certainly I know in Texas, they never had any sort of standards. So we have curriculum standards for what can be taught in our classrooms um, and a lot of oversight in that. But library materials, there was no, no strong oversight, no mandated standards for collection and development. And HB 900 did that and changed education code for the better to include these mandated standards. And that's a big deal because of, yeah. again, because of how libraries have always been looked at. So those standards are being upheld by the Fifth Circuit and, and in the law. And so we know that we're going to have to correct some things, change some things, respond mm -hmm. to some of the lawsuits. But, but I will say for those who, we hear a lot that, or we hear from people, well, they can find it on their phone. Mm -hmm. And that's the real problem. And I just heard that actually from a superintendent in Pine Tree ISD in a meeting that I had with him. Uh, with a group of local citizens who are working to um, audit the school library there. And they found about 75, 80 sexually explicit materials, including, by the way, wow. Game of Thrones, the graphic novel, which has yeah. pornography in it, cartoon right. pornography. And he sat there in this meeting as we're trying to explain, you know, the law and and, and why he needs to remove the books. And this is in Longview, Texas, in Northeast Texas, yeah. in a small school district. And he picks up his phone and he says, well, this is the real problem, what they can find on here. And I said, sir, <laughs> Wow. We took care of that problem in the legislature too. We have in the state of Texas, you have to have, we have strict age verification for online porn. That's now. right. That's but right. when you have porn in your school library, you are sending a message to children yeah. that it's okay to go on here right. and look at porn. In fact, some of the books that we are trying to remove that are now illegal to have in the state in the school library, tell kids that porn is a sugary treat and to go online and research their favorite porn star. Oh and, um, and, oh, it's, I mean, people- This is shocking. Know, oh, it is. And, and a lot of people still have no idea the kind of books that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I have a real problem with superintendents who are continuing to try to debate us on the yeah. law instead of just complying with the law because they have always had the legal right to remove books that are not appropriate for students. Mm -hmm. They have always had the legal right to remove books that are sexually explicit and vulgar. Mm -hmm. and moreover, they have always had the moral imperative yeah. to do the right thing and remove those books without a state directive telling them right. to do it. Right. And so I have no grace anymore left for mm -hmm. superintendents who tell me the real problem is this, 
Yeah. When they have porn in their school libraries and they refuse to do the right thing and yeah. remove it. Uh, yeah. And that's why it's so important to put the pressure for parents to put the pressure on the superintendent and go to their school board meetings. Yes, it is. And and one of the things that we're doing in Senate District 1, um, and then this will be rolled out um, a, a model across you know, the state of Texas, we have 31 Senate districts. And so we've got, we're looking for people to lead and be liaisons for book auditing in every single Senate district across the state. But what we're doing is yeah. in Senate District 1, every single school district that has a catalog online, most of them do have their catalogs online, will be audited by the end of this year. And we will be tracking what takes place through the audit, whether or not books are removed once the audit's complete. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're not, um, you know, what what we're gonna follow that and doc follow that and document the process of filing reconsiderations and complaints to the TEA. And then frankly, we're gonna also track and look at board members and see what Good. board members are doing locally to yeah. make sure that children are protected and that the law is followed and that these books are removed. And if they're not doing that, if they are not protecting children from explicit content in schools and yeah. following and complying with the law, yeah. then they should not be serving on a school board. Right. And so we're going to be tracking all of this and um and rolling, you know, rolling this out across the state of Texas so that we, you know, that we're tracking all of this. And all of this data will really be um used in the next legislative session, but also it's a way, like I said, to organize and uh look at school board members who are allowing this to happen. That is perfect. That's the, exactly what we need. Would that be something that you would be like sending a report out to people or would they look at the website and be able to get that? Yeah, so um, everything that we're going to do will be documented on protectchildhood.org. And right now that's just, a, it's a sub stack. It's my Substack account, and mm -hmm. um, but I've documented um, everything related to HB 900. Um, it's is on there, and so eventually it'll probably be a, a, a an actual website and not just a blog. But Substack, yeah. everything will be updated on there, and um, and people can go on there and and um, find out how to how well they'll find a ton of resources on there and find yeah. out how they can uh, work on this issue locally. Okay. And is that where they would go, um, to help you, uh, audit, audit, like if they wanted to audit their own school library, um, mm -hmm. is that where they would find that information? Or maybe you can yeah. just talk a little bit about that process. Cause I know you explained it at our Republican meeting, but it would be good just to, uh, get a, uh, another, another, um, look at that. Yeah. So if you go to this um, protectchildhood.org, there's a document on there that gives you tips on how to audit your school library. Mm -hmm. And and then there's also a, a link to a book list where you can use the book list that I've curated mm -hmm. um, to get started. And so what's, what's great is that most of our school libraries they have their collections in an online database. And most of them use uh, Go Follow It. Uh, and so the, there's a link to that um, in that little cheat sheet on how to, how to audit your school libraries. And it's really not, it's, you know, there's a little few troubleshooting kind of tips and, and um, but overall, it's just a really easy process. Uh -huh. If you have a group, of you know five or ten people auditing you can get you can get through an audit of a school district really really quickly as long as it's online 
And um, if it's not online, then you then you need to typically do a public information request and and get their you know actually get digital copies. But usually, it's on an Excel file. Their entire collection, library collection, should be on there. Um, but that's the first step. Is we you know we we need to know what's in the school library. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, I have done hundreds of what I call quick audits, yeah. of, you know, keyword searches, um, hundreds of audits across the state of Texas. We have a lot of school districts in the state of Texas. Yeah. And I've looked at urban, suburban, rural. I have not found a single school district that does not have filthy books in its school library. That's really too bad. I'm really disappointed to hear that. Yeah. So now it doesn't mean that there aren't school districts who have um, got, you know, become compliant with the law. Um, I love to talk about Tyler ISD too. I mentioned Tyler ISD at the beginning of our chat. Yeah. And, that's where your um, son was going, right? And that's kind of when you first got started. Yeah. And one yeah. of the things I love to brag about them because as, as upset and frustrated as I was and some other people in the community when we first discovered the books, um, you know, that Dr. Marty Crawford and uh, President Wade Washman and, you know, under their leadership, mm -hmm. they completely, I mean, they removed all the books uh, that we uh, brought to their attention that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they've been so on top of it. And the entire school board at that time, you know, was supportive and they were concerned about what I, what I found. Yeah. And so they responded appropriately. The mm -hmm. appropriate response is not to pick up your phone and say they can find much worse on here. Right. The appropriate response is to, is to address the problem and make sure that kids in your school yeah. are not confronted with pornographic and indecent inappropriate content in the school library. And so he did the moral imperative and he didn't need a state directive to do it. This was a year and a mm -hmm. half prior to the legislature, or gosh, probably at least a year and a half before the bill, you know, was signed into law. Yeah. So well, credit to him. You know, I love to give credit where credit's due. So I'm so glad that he did what was right and 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 protected the kids because that's really what the job is is to protect kids and educate them and this stuff is not educating no and it's and to your point earlier too it's um ex early exposure to pornography and explicit content and appropriate content it's very harmful to children we know we know that pornography is harmful to adults but yeah. a child um, who's confronted with pornography is it, it is very damaging to yes. children yes. and and we also know that all of this like um, explicit content what it does is it it's it's a form of grooming sexual grooming and right. sexual grooming leads to exploitation it leads to physical acts of sexual abuse of children yeah. Yeah. And, and this whole agenda, because um, part of um, what we're seeing is this, uh, it, to, I'll just say to, to me and to in the law, it doesn't matter if it's homosexual or heterosexual. Right. If it's explicit content, it's prohibited. But there, I have noticed that in the LGBTQIA alphabet community, yeah, that they defend this material as though it as though children need to see it in order to um, be accepting of like well rounded. I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just amazing. But then when we look at the West Coast and some of the laws that are in California that are being passed, right. it's this L the same community of people that defend giving pornographic content to children in school libraries, mm -hmm. are also trying to water down laws 
yeah that protect children from physical acts of of sexual abuse and pedophilia and because they're saying that it unfairly um attacks the gay community i don't know if you've seen some of those i have i have and i think that it's just the same spirit of perversity that just they just go hand in hand yeah yeah they do and i tell everybody um you know what we're what we are dealing with and what people have to understand is that what all of this leads to what the end goal is is pedophilia yeah they're not even hiding it anymore all you have to do they have to maybe hide it here but all you have to do is look to california right look at california look at the pride festivals that took place in california because the pride festivals here have obscene device devices you know sex toys and things being sold Uh in front of children and mm-hmm. um, very inappropriate things happening in front of children. But yeah. when you go to San Francisco, what are they doing at their pride festivals? They are, I mean, I, I can't even probably say it on your, on the. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. okay they're standing yeah. in the urine, giving blowjobs to each other men oh in gosh. front of children, in front of children being present and no, and they don't do anything about it. Because I guess that's their community standard now. And in order. There's no standards. There's no standard. No so, standards. But, but if we have to protect mm-hmm. our community standards mm-hmm. in Texas. And if our community standards now are that we can have cartoon porn and erotica and, you know, explicit content in our school libraries. Yeah. I mean, what, where, what are we going to be in five years? Because exactly. community standards have a legal connotation mm-hmm. or a legal meaning, yes. legal significant significance. Our criminal laws yes. related to all of this depend on our own community standards. Right. So it's like they, you, we've got to be, we've got to put up this gate. You know, and so what we're doing is we're rebuilding the wall because we kind of we kind of dropped the ball. You know, I mean, in Texas, this stuff should never have even gotten this far. It shouldn't have. And I think, um, you know, my oldest son is 19 Mm -hmm. and um, and I have a big age gap between my my children. And and so with time and experience. Experience, I look back and I think, wow, what in the world was my generation of parents thinking when we were just asleep at the wheel? I think yeah. on the pornography that our kids had access to on the right. internet. Because we all, I think a lot of us thought, oh, well, we had filters and, you know, different things on our computers right. that protect them. I, our kids were not as protected. That might have made us feel a little bit better, but but right. maybe, you know, and some parents were probably more aware than others. But I've heard a lot of testimony related to um, children um, being on the internet and being right. connected with porn, not right. where they were even seeking it out, but where they. I know. Were- yeah. It's on social media. I mean, it's um, it's just it's so an Instagram. Public. Yeah, you can yeah, scroll just Instagram. through Instagram and, and find it. Yeah. yeah, and it's in their school libraries. You know, it's being sold. Right. Um, cartoon porn is being sold and marketed to kids at Barnes & Noble and on Amazon. And and so I think, though, that yeah. um, we have got to, we have got to, now that we're aware and really mm-hmm. fully awake on this, we, we have got to correct it. Yes, now. yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing and you're in the fight and, um, you know, you're wait, you're ra- raising awareness and you've started this with HB 900. So I really want to thank you. I'm going to encourage everybody, um, one more time. What was your website? Where can people get involved in this? It's protectchildhood.org. Okay protectchildhood.org. Thank you, Christine. I'm so thankful that you joined me today. Thank you. It was so good to be here. Thank you.